Okay, so question for you. I've got two data sets here. My question is, how similar or different are these two data sets? So I'm just looking down the data now. You might say, well, Chris, that's easy. Broadly speaking, we've got the same values in there. They look kind of the same. And you might say, well, Chris, to confirm that, I'm going to just work out the average. I'm going to work out the mean average. And to do that, I'm going to use the average formula. So you can go ahead, download the download file and work along with me. We're going to do this now. Control shift down, hit the F4 key. We've got the average in. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second data set equals average using the keyboard to go to the data set here. Control shift down and F4 again and then enter. And you can see I've got the two averages, 48.04, 47.04. So just a difference of one. These averages, they appear very close. So should we conclude that these data sets are similar? Mm. I'm not sure about that. In this video, I'm going to explain why you should be doing more than just creating averages for your data. And we're going to create a more comprehensive data analysis, including finding this data distribution. And this gives you a clue as to the actual features of these two data sets, which are quite different. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer, an Excel content creator, real world consultant and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you like the way we do things here at Tiger, you're going to love our Excel cheat sheet mini course. There's three videos that have never been on YouTube. There's a PDF of the stuff you need to know and our unique Excel formula training tool. The link is in the description below for the cheat sheet. I would love to see you there. With that said, let's get started with this one. Make sure you download the download file and work along with me. So first, there's more than one average that you should be using in your data analysis. They're going to tell you different things about the data set. So what about the median average? Are you using this in your Excel data analysis? Very easy in Excel. We've got the median formula. So I'm going to go ahead, type in median, control shift and down once again. And then this time I'm just going to drag this formula across or use the keyboard shortcuts to do that. Control R. So I've got 43 and then 47. Hmm. So what does this tell us about the data? Well, data set two, they're quite close. Data set one, the median is quite a lot lower. Well, the median is useful because it's not affected by outlier values. It's not affected by outlier values. To find the median, we're just going to line the values up and then pick out the middle value. So it's always a value from the data set. So the fact that the mean average is higher, that is affected by outlier values. Already I can see data set one probably has some high values at the top end. That's a fundamentally different feature to data set two. What else can we do to get a more comprehensive data analysis? Very simple stuff, guys. Let's find the maximum value in the data set using the max formula. I'm going to go down here, control shift down, using the keyboard shortcuts as far as possible, and then shift and uh, right arrow, control R, take this across. Ah, now can we see we've got max value of 95 confirming the theory that we developed with the mean and the median there. What about the uh, minimum? So I'm going to go ahead once again, equals min, control shift down. Great practice for formula building. It's just a skill formula building. We've got to practice it. Control R. And I can see the minimum values are quite different as well. Data set two, we've got a smaller range. But let's go ahead and confirm exactly what the range of the data is by deducting the minimum value from the maximum value with a simple arithmetic formula. And we're seeing these data sets with the mean, they look quite similar. Actually, their features are really quite different. Just some simple Excel formula is telling us that. Now, tell me about standard deviation. Standard deviation get, gave me nightmares during A-level maths and uh, master statistics courses. Here's the way to think about standard deviation. It's a measure of dispersion. How spread out is the data and what standard deviation does is it takes every item in the data set and finds the distance from the mean average the distance from the mean average that's called the, the deviation it takes all of those distances from the mean for each piece of data and gets the standard 
gets the average, the standard of the deviations. In other words, the average of all the distances from the mean. Does that make sense? That standard deviation. So it's so useful because it gives us a sense, a sense of dispersion. How spread out is this data? So standard deviation formula, we can just go standard uh, dev here, ST dev. And then once again, using the keyboard, control shift down and enter. And then I can just, I'm just going to drag this across using the mouse to show a different way of doing it. But start the video here from the previous information. Can you see what the difference is going to be in the standard deviation for data set two? Is it going to be bigger or smaller? Let's go ahead and find out. Dragging that formula across and we can see a big difference in terms of the standard deviation. So just from the formula we've put in, we're beginning to tell the story of this data set. And if this is as far as you go, you're doing so much more than just the mean average. So that is certainly a good thing. But I suggest we need to complete the picture here by understanding the data distribution. And here, one of my Excel secret weapons comes into play, which is, which is of course, the frequency formula. And what frequency is gonna do? It's gonna create these bins in the background, less than 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, et cetera, and then count the number of times that pieces of data from each data set drop into each bin. It's gonna allow us, allow us to build up a picture, quite literally of the data set, when combined with a chart, but it is tricky to put together. So, and we've got a full video on the frequency formula in the description below this video. So check that one out. We've got to go with upper bounds. So 20 means anything below 20, 30 means anything above 20 and less than or equal to 30. We need those upper bounds in a column to get frequency working. So if we've got that set up, we've got to then select all of the cells, select all, this, all of the cells that we want to, frequency to go into, I'm going to try to do it. I might get it wrong, but we'll keep going until we get it right. So we hit tab here. So frequency is asking for the data array. So what data do you want me to analyze? So control shift down here. And then we're going to hit F4. Hit F4, the dollar signs are in. We want those references to stay fixed because the frequency formula is coming down. And then comma, and we've got our pre-prepared bins. Or oh, these are the upper bounds for the bins. That's how frequency works. Hit F4 again, then don't do anything. Just take a beat here, as they'd say in succession, take a beat and then control shift. You've got to go control shift and enter. Control shift and enter. And there we can see the power of the frequency formula. Now for practice, I'm going to do it again for data set two. So first, you see I made a mistake there. So first I've got to select all of the cells equals frequency and then tab. Then once again, we want the data array. Excel's asking, where's the data? Control shift down, F4, comma, trying to do this all on the keyboard. And then the bins are array, and we can go ahead and select our upper bounds, hit the F4 key again, take a beat, and then control shift. And I'm gonna close the bracket, control shift and enter, holding down control shift, hitting enter. And then we can see the formulae going in there. So in order to quickly test um, frequency, I'm going to go Alt plus at the bottom here and just sum up the number of values in the data set. These two should be the same and I can confirm that by going to the data set, going control shift and down and I can see at the bottom of Excel, Excel is telling me there's a hundred values in the data set. So how about that frequency? Even just looking at the output from frequency, it gives us an understanding of the shape of the data. I can see it's rather different, but we need to complete the picture literally by creating a chart here. So what's my quick way of creating a chart is to select some data. Even if, even if it's not exactly the data you want, select two adjacent columns like this. Then we're gonna to go to insert. And the particular chart I want is a column chart here. I'm just gonna go 2D column, try to keep it simple. And with charts, I'm always happy. I'm okay. It's not going to be right first time. So we go ahead and try to fix the chart here. So the second, the first series, I don't want. That's just increasing numbers there. Uh, that's actually the upper bound. So I can just click on there in the chart and hit delete. Then next, I want to fix the uh, Y axis labels here. So I right click on the chart, go to select data, and we want to put in these nice uh, bin titles that I've previously created. So I'm gonna to go to 
um, edit horizontal axis labels, axis label range. We can go ahead and select this and I can see, hit OK now, and I can see down at the bottom, we've got our uh, axis labels in there and it's looking okay. Let's go ahead and fix the chart title here and then let's think about getting a second series into the chart. So I'm gonna say data distribution here and make sure you downloaded the file and worked along with me. Chart creation is so important in uh, Excel and data analysis more generally. So we've got series two here. We wanna put the other series on, don't we? So we wanna put the uh, data set two on here as well. How do we do that? Well, we can right click on the chart, select data. Then we want to add a series here. So I've gone for add, not series name yet. We'll fix that in a second. Just the series values, got data set two here, and I can see it's actually appeared on the chart already. And I can go ahead and hit OK. OK, again, we've got our two series on the chart. We're beginning to tell the story of the data. And it's a story that wouldn't be complete just by creating the mean average. That's why we've got to move beyond averages. What else would we want to do? Well, this legend down here, not particularly informative. How do we fix that? We can go to select data, edit, and then the series name. This is the data in column H. So that is good for a series name. And then series two, edit, and this is column I. So for series name, I can just click on that cell. And suddenly we've got data set one, data set two, and we can appreciate the whole picture. This is how to do it, guys. A comprehensive data analysis, two kinds of averages. The median gives us insights. We need that too. The maximum, the minimum, the range, the standard deviation gives us that measure of dispersion. And then the frequency formula, difficult to set up, but it helps us build a picture of the data when combined with the chart. If you like the way we do things here at Tiger, you are going to love our Excel cheat sheet mini course. So go ahead and grab that. You've just got to put your email in. You're going to get free access to the mini course. The next video to watch is in the comment below this video. I'll see you there.